Hello, well, welcome back to the BCS podcast week three. Uh, we're starting to really figure out who is who now. Um, gentlemen, how are we? Uh, uh, good. I, I'm just seeing better. that uh, I'm seeing that you're uh, living in the past, reliving the glory days, Blake. You got your JJ McCarthy jersey on. Look, listen. If if anybody had the best weekend of that they could have had, it was him. Uh, the only thing that wasn't good was uh, Darnold looked absolutely incredible. So. Um, yeah, he, he that, it was a pretty much a perfect weekend for JJ McCarthy and the other guys. Um, um, you know, Jim know going one and zero. You know how it is. Um, yeah, I, I almost cried during the Chargers game. That's a whole separate issue. But um, <laughs> when he did the JJ quarterback thing to Justin Herbert, like my entire soul died. You know the the slap slap punch punch shake or whatever thing. You yeah, did. yeah. I was like, yeah. oh man, it was like seeing your ex in public. Tough scene. Oh, um, yeah. I feel so bad. Yeah, I know. Listen, it, it was a lot happened. A lot of things happened. Um, just even the line movement alone, just looking at the USC game, Michigan was a 10 point favorite and they're now a three point dog. So that's yeah. crazy. The, the, I haven't seen this mm. much line movement in a long time, but that's a whole different issue. But um, I mean, we might as well just start with our, my game. I, I know we're probably going out of order. It doesn't matter. It's what you're here for. Um, yeah, oh, we're, we're time, all here. We're all here for this. First time in history uh, of this podcast, Michigan lost, so that was less than ideal. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to tell you. Um, pretty much everything that could have went wrong went wrong. Um, I mean, I said, agree with Cozy that it was either going to be close or a blowout. Um, you look at the, the first drive, man. Everything was in front of us, right? You start off great. Fans were loud. I think they had a false start. Was it the first play, second play, something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was like and the first or second play. That's thing I got to start with because I have made fun of the student section for a long time uh, outside of this podcast, on this podcast, on Twitter. They were there. I got there like an hour before the game. I went for the Barstool tailgate. I dapped up my boy Connor Stallions, had a quick convo with him, uh, thanked him for his service both on and off the field. Um, and it was like, yeah, great, you know, the great start to the day. Um, watching everyone make fun of him. Um, McConaughey came out going crazy. Uh, that now video that we've seen where even the equipment manager girl was, you know, talking and, and, and saying every word of the, the rap song that they had playing. I was like, oh boy, we're in big trouble. Um, if I wish I could have seen that beforehand because that was a pretty tough <laughs> scene. But um, they the went look down on the, the Michigan field. player's face when they walked yeah. out of that tunnel. It, it felt just... like everything was going our way because the first drive. It was third and long, maybe six times it felt like, and they got mm-hmm. it every single time. And I'm like, God damn it, make one stop. Then they shank a field goal. I was like, okay. So the fans were there loud you know, the whole time. Everyone's going nuts. Everyone's up there going crazy. I'm like, okay, this is great. Even the guys around me are like, okay, this is the loudest I've heard this place in a very long time. Everyone showed up that needed to show up, yeah. except a few guys, obviously. We'll get there in a minute. <laughs> it... I was like, okay, we're good. And then there's an infamous play that happened on the, the – it might have been like the second play of our drive on offense. Wide open. There is a cutback hole for Donovan Edwards to take an 80-yard place to run to the house. Yep. That would have completely changed the game. I sat on here and said to everyone the whole time, guys, we have to score first. If we didn't score first, that I hate that they got the ball first, but they somehow – you know, they, had, they used everything they could have. They had a trick play. They had all these first downs on third down and long. Like it was like, I think it was like third and 16. They got like an 18 yard catch. Third, yeah, it was third and hit. 17. Yeah. Everything hit. And I'm there like, God damn. And then they missed a field goal. And then Donovan Edwards could take it to the house. It was like one, two, three and out. It's like, what? We, we didn't do anything? Like, what? what well, we all the momentum and that's what we're doing. I mean, Davis Warren with his first pass attempt was amazing. It, it was just, it was, it was the dumb. The drive was run, run, pass on third and long. And it was like, what, what we do We did that every time until yeah. we looked up and it was 24 he, to nothing. He, here's the thing, though. Your main problem was is you also started out the game with a false start, like, right away. Like, that, that How just – How do you get a home? I know. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it, here's where the game really kind of, like, changed everything. And I kept saying it to, like, people that were texting me. I'm like, okay. So, you guys went down. You got the field goal. You made it 7 to 3. And then – Texas just went the, every third down. Texas would get a first down every third. Yeah, down. they went. They went uh, and, seven of eight in the first half. I think. Yeah, seven of eight on third down. I mean, it, it was seven it was nine. ridiculous. And here's the thing: 
it wasn't on all passes either. Like they had a lot of on that one touchdown drive, they didn't have they had like one third down and just ran the ball down your throats to make it 14 to three. And then the next thing you know is I kept saying, and I, I said it on your field goal drive. I said, Davis Warren is going to throw a pick here soon. He keeps throwing in to double and triple coverage. And then right after 14 to three, he threw a pick. And I mean, yeah. you just saw the wheels fall off. I don't even know if it was on him, the game. I don't, in, in person. It, it's not. It, in it, person, it, it felt brutal. Um, cause you were watching and you're like every single guy, but miles Hinton has gotten blown up at least three times in my O line. Like yeah. you, he would yeah. snap. There's three guys in his face with the same yep. problem against Fresno. And that's the problem with my mission. That's the problem with the fan base is I was sitting here like, guys, it's Fresno state. There are red flags. And everyone yeah. told me I was being a Debbie Downing son of a bitch the entire week. It's we'll see after Texas. And we're sitting here I, again. I know I'm jumping ahead the whole game. We're sitting here where we got profusely beat. I don't care what they say. Sark didn't try in the fourth quarter. B- oh, borderline they half they the third up, quarter. They just mailed they it up in. Half the third quarter. Yeah. Exactly. They mailed it in. They, they ruined the ball. Killed us. Okay. And and legitimately, I had people going. We won the second half. That was a legit straight face thing. Someone said to me. I go in. I'm. Ooh. I'm trying to. It, I'm getting that, like angry that, again now. Like in live time, you can see how red I'm getting. Like I'm actually pissed right now. I think one of the main things that was a problem was, I mean, defensively there was no depth. Once the once the starters got gassed the first half, yeah. after that second drive, there was no recovery because the defense can only do so much with the offense not performing, and the defense looked like I literally took my uh, uh, Graham off the field. Because he was just like gassed when they got in the red zone. They, I'm pretty sure they put in like a freshman to play two or three plays because they were just so toast. And then also, whoever I forget, number seven is that Page. He got beat on some he bad passes. He got beat on some bad passes and never recovered. It didn't seem like I'm, I'm going to say this too. You then hold Texas to a field goal and just the backbreaker out of all people to fumble. It's your for sure handed tight end. Like you, ha- you had yeah. to know what that. That's it. Okay, yeah. I Can I say one th- thing. They reviewed one play the entire game, and it was Donovan Edwards getting hit in the shoulder. They, they yeah. said it was targeting. Yeah. Okay. Again, the game was out of hand. They passed the ball. It clearly bounced into the guy's hands, the Texas guy, and they scored the next play. Like yeah. they didn't review a thing the entire uh, game, and it was an injury time yeah. on one of them. Look, the the Loveland fumble is so questionable. I think it would have stood with what was said on the field. At least review it. I, I, I agree. I agree. But, like, he definitely, like, made a football move, and then he just literally hit his thigh with the ball. Like, I mean. I'm pretty sure they did one of those quick reviews because they started doing that. I don't know why. These quick I, reviews and they just, like, they didn't even look, look at, at the they sideline. They didn't even look at the sideline. Yeah. They didn't get anything out. Nothing. And yeah. it's just – there was no depth, obviously. Like, and, and this is what I said earlier, and everyone, everyone takes out of context. When I say the defense is better, it is ta- more talented than it was last year. Uh, high-end talent. Yes. If you look at my secondary and third corners, I mean, Will Johnson had three plays in this game. It was a run tackle. He laid a dude out. Someone, The Texas fans trying to tell me he got trucked in that play on the sideline. Give me a break. He did and not. He know. had one he of the better you. plays I've ever seen where he just – he was on the opposite side of the field, and he chased that guy all the way down. Like, I wish it was a wide view. It reminded me of uh, DJ, uh, DK Metcalf chasing down Buda Baker. Will just comes out of yeah. nowhere and just saves the, t- saves the touchdown. I know they scored the next play probably. I don't even know if they did or not. But... And, and here's the thing. Look, even – throw him the whole had... game. So, at least Will no, had a good game. He he had an okay game. There was some where he got burned, but, I mean – didn't throw oh. Will Johnson the entire game. He had zero attempts at Will Johnson. It was crazy. Zero. It was, I mean – It was more on the other game. side. It was on the other side. It was more on the other side, but there, came, there was, was he the one tackling. He's all the way across. But the, there was one play where he, he, he should have gotten burned. He should have gotten burned. It was a bad overthrow. And I, off was, it it yeah, may not have been in his coverage, but look. the end of the half, it was Matthew Golden, the transfer from Houston. And it was, yeah. uh, I don't know if it was Jair Hill or if it was Amir Hall. Mm-hmm. All right. One of the two. It was like a weak rollout. Everybody knew it was going to be a throw to the guy on the left. And it's you know, Quinn, a right-handed quarterback, rolling out to his left. It should be the most obvious in the world. 
and he just gets cooked on a three-yard route. I don't know how you do that. I could do that. I swear to God I would have broken that pass up. I'm not even kidding you. It's within three yards. Tackle the guy. Tackle the guy. Okay? The, and, I mean. This sounds like me during the 2020 National Championship it's game. It's crazy because I don't know. I can tackle better than tough Borland. Like, I don't even think the defense played, like, super bad. Because if you consider where the ball was, I swear to God their average field position was our 48-yard line or something. Because I think everything was on our drive. This is the issue, and I've gotten a lot of heat from this, and I don't care. I will. St- I am very convicted in my opinions. Sharon Moore is not a head coach material right now, okay? He has game planned for three games. These two this year, does anyone know what game he game planned last year? Uh, it was what? Probably uh, Bowling Green. Uh, not Fresno State. It was, or okay. Bowling no, Green. Bowling and, it was Green a, and it was a rough, and it was a rough game. Yep. That game was horrible. That's a max school. Fresno State doesn't look as good as we thought they were. They gave up a hey, thousand we'll, yards to Sacramento. We'll talk State. about that Bowling Green Max school here soon because they look pretty good. They looked awesome this year, but, yeah. but still, I wish we yeah. played them this year. But you look at everything, and it's just like Wink was getting out schemed. Like, and it was ridiculous. I mean, Sark did what he wanted. The Texas guys in the spaces, they were wrong on a lot of things, but they were right about their offensive line being good. My defensive line couldn't do a thing. Um, we had like one borderline sack where Quinn got back to the line of scrimmage. He was sneaky mobile. And I, I almost don't blame it on that because I feel like it was like, hey, Quinn can't run. So you'd rather drop back and cover it. So Quinn was doing the pump fake. And like, you know, he had like, what, 10 rush yards. It's got to be a career high for him. Like, it's yeah. kind of like CJ Stroud. It's like, dude, he's not going to run the ball. Who cares? Like, you'd rather let him get a five yard run than a wide open touchdown. Right. Cause it happened in that one play where they were like held like eight guys. He was wide open. He hit the dude in the back of the end zone. They brought it back. Yeah, The, like, du- the dude held, the dude held on the end and it was so yeah. obvious. And if you would have just let him go, man, yeah. this game, like wide said, open touchdown. this game, so, could've, they could have had 14, 21 more points, but just off bad again, mistakes. You had Brandon, you had Mason Graham lining up as an edge rusher as your D tackle. It's like, what? he's not Aaron Donald, dude, relax. He's, the closest yeah. thing you can get to in college, but he's not that. Like Aaron Donald's a whole nother level. Let's, let's let's take it easy here. But Kurt Campbell was completely out of his mind. I don't know if you guys agree with this watching the game. Michigan ran the ball at will. Whenever we actually ran it, which is not often, we ran for like four or five yards of carry, which is not a problem. Like, uh, I mean, on the first drive, wasn't it like third and two, third and three, and we throw it five wide? Bes- well, besides, get a touch until the second quarter. The Donovan yeah. Edwards thing. I, I think the problem was is you guys got so far behind and you made so many mental errors early on in the game. Like you had the false start, then you had the interception, then you had the fumble. It's like you guys couldn't run the ball anymore. And I think Texas kind of knew that. Like they were they were okay giving up four yards per play. Yeah. Um, and the guy in my back, J.J. McCarthy, this is the, the legit stat I post on Twitter all the time. He had the highest third down conversion rate in the last 10 years as a quarterback. That's more than Joe Burrow, anyone. Okay. And anytime you needed him to be clutch, he was clutch. Sure. He had bad numbers at any times. His third down splits are insane. He had 70% conversion rate on third down. I don't think people understand how insane that is. And then you add that with Blake Corum as a short yardage back. It was unbelievable. And then I got a great idea. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Probably the piss thing that pissed me off the most. Kirk Campbell. We bring in Alex Orgy on third and short. I swear to God, they had nine guys in the box. There might have been a wide open receiver on the line. I swear <laughs> to God, there might have been open. The, there time, probably was. Like three times. Big cat. Yeah. Big cat. He just out every time. He'll say, Wildcat, run. He would come in. He ran every time. He didn't even try to look the pass. And if he hands the ball, he off, ran it once it, on third and two. Ken Hall would have ran in for a touchdown. Every the, time he came in. The, the, the third and two run dead up the middle was by far one of my so favorite funny. Of the game. Oh man, it, everybody knew it was coming. They just didn't know what side he was going to. I, was I would just like right. to let he our, went right I, the middle. I would like to let our limited viewers, because I don't think we have a ton of viewers here, but do not listen to this with your buds in because Blake is screaming mad right now. I'm trying, I'm trying to be composed because you can normally blame it on the fans. You can normally blame it on a lot of things. Everyone was loud. People were screaming. We were down a ton. Uh, I did not like how happy the students were when they were singing Mr. Brightside and we were down freaking a million and nothing. I was like, have some pride doing all the dances and stuff. No, sit down. And I almost wanted to boo. I, I try not to boo when I can. There was, again, there's a, there's a lot of, 
There's a lot of new There was fans. a lot of Texas fans. There was a lot of Texas that fans expected. there. That's that was true. expected. Okay, there'll, yeah, be, a lot of, was, there'll be a lot of Michigan fans when we go down there. There'll be a ton of Texas fans with the shoe. It is what it is. Okay, they yeah. travel. Oh, yeah. Money is not that an for them. Incredible. And it was yep. sick yeah. how loud it was. I, it felt like kind of like a bowl game where, like, you know, like sneaky bowl game. Where was, I think there was hot take. There was more Texas fans of that game than there were Washington fans in the national championship. And I will die on that hill. Um, cause there's probably 20,000, 25,000 Texas fans. They're all my corner too, which is annoying, but they were sick. It was fun. It felt good. I like that these games happen. I like that Michigan's playing these games, obviously now more than we would, you know, when it actually matters and, uh, you know, when it mattered a few as years the, ago, like, yeah, as like the Ohio State like, schedule is the four team playoff schedule, not the expanded playoff schedule, but, yeah. um, yeah, we, I mean, we could realistically be two and two in a few weeks. Um, you know, I don't know when the last time we've been like that is. Um, you know, my coach, you know, all season, we've had questions about the offensive line. You've got a third string right tackle in. You've got a center at, at your, you have a D tackle at center. Um, you know, you just tweet hashtag smash and you say, you know, we will smash, blah, 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 blah. You got no rushing touchdowns. Um, everyone's posting the stats. For the first, third game, first time since 1800. I don't care about that. I want to know the last time we've gone two games since it. I don't care about this the first two games. Who gives a shit about that stat? I want to know the, the, the last time we've gone two games in a row because um, it's embarrassing. And um, everything went wrong that could have gone wrong. Again, sneaky. The defense didn't play terribly. I, I, obviously, we knew we had the depth of the kiddie pool, and they abused that, whatever. Um, I think we'll be fine long term. I think um, if Jack Tuttle comes back, this team fixes itself because – it's weird, and I, don't, and I would love your guys' opinion on this. I'm trying not to look in too much to the last drive. Obviously, it was garbage time, but Warren finally extended the pocket, finally started rolling out. I said he, the dude tried to do his JJ impression. He's like, let's just roll out and throw it cross body. And it started working a lot. I didn't like Samaj celebrating a first down, down 100. That was embarrassing. Uh, I, I'm happy he got a touchdown because Ohio State fans, the number one per- hated person and that, that they hate number one is Samaj Morgan after his Instagram Live. You know, I had more yards than him in the Michigan game um, last year. But um, it's just, I don't know if to take too much out of that because Warren was playing to not make a mistake and he was so nervous. Like he would like would double, th- he would think before he threw it every time and he can't think in these games. You just got to sling it, dude. It happens, whatever. Picks happen, but you can't like stare down a guy and throw it. Um, I mean, again, everything went wrong. The the devil on my shoulder is we're cooked. We might go like, you know, six and six. Honestly, I think it's like, there's no game. That's a win at this point. Like you can circle as a win. Um, Cause Arkansas state, they have no defense, but they run a very up tempo spray it around the field type offense. We have a lot of bad offensive matchups early, which I do like if we were a good team, It'd be like, Hey, look, we can actually like suit or bad at um, but the angel. On my shoulder is literally everything went wrong for us. And everything went right for Texas. Like, seriously, like, I mean, they got every bounce, they got everything, no reviews, none of that stuff. Most of the reviews didn't matter. Almost all of them didn't matter, right? Because if you really look at it, like if, if Donovan Edwards bounces that runner out, it's 7 nothing. the game's completely different. Um, if we didn't play call like idiots, it is what it is. Because I think the Fresno game, again, you know, you can be like, oh, my God, we didn't do this, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's the first game jitters, first game as a head coach, blah, blah, blah. Not really, but you know what I mean. There's zero excuse for what happened last game. Everything was completely unprepared. Um, I'm very interested to see what happens in this Arkansas State game. Um, part of me thinks it'll be a Harbaugh special uh, from Sharon trying to cosplay as Harbaugh and will win like 54 to nothing. Everyone will say everything's fine and then we'll be in an absolute dogfight against USC. Um, but part of me wants to see, uh, can Tuttle play? Or do we save him for USC? And now USC open the season as a two touchdown favorite at home against them. And now you're a three point dog. I've never seen that much line movement. Like I understand why Ohio state's like a three touchdown favorite now, basically. Like I get that. Of course. Um, it's only 17, but the craziest thing is, is, is this is literally me being like probably the sunshine pumping guy. Am I crazy to say that the second spot in the big pens legitimately up for grabs? Oregon uh, looks bad. I would... Penn state looks bad. I mean, I mean, people, are, people are legitimately talking about uh, Nebraska and Northwestern, or Nebraska and Indiana being the second seed in the Big Ten, which I think is shows you how insane it is. Because I don't want to be this guy, and I, I don't care. I'm gonna, you know, I'll be this guy. I don't think any other team in the Big Ten would be two and zero after the two games we played. Outside we, of Ohio State, I, seriously. I, 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 I can say this: We Oregon played. Oregon was in a dogfight to two bad teams. Yeah, yeah. State was in a dogfight to a Mac school. Hey, okay? hey, you you take that back about Boise State. 
They are a what? good team. They are a good team. Come on. Come on. I was uh, in a, I right, beat, so we, a, so I beat a Mac. Whatever. I beat my school, but we're going to need to move on. But we, we can move on. I don't we'll think move on. any other team in the Big Ten beats Texas outside Ohio we'll, State. And by we'll, the way, we, there's a lot of go. Michigan fans that are saying Texas would kill Ohio State. Ohio State would beat the hell out of Texas. They match up horribly against them. They would play action those dog shit linebackers to death, and they'd run it down their throats. So Michigan I, fans, shut the hell up. I, I'm going to no comment, but we can go to uh, the leaders of the Big Ten in the uh, uh, state oh, of Michigan. Oh, no, we'll go down the list first, and then we'll come back around. Okay. Uh, we got to go to these other things for uh, Friday. Western Illinois played Indiana. Indiana scored their They're most points in their school's history, seventy-seven to three. Uh, the, the only the only downfall is that team that they played lost like twenty-six straight games. But other than that, um, like seriously, is yeah, that that's crazy? They lose to a high school team, Western Illinois. Do you know how bad he got? Is it what three years out of win in like the D two level or FCS level, Some, whatever like it is? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah something like yes, that. Yes. That's terrible. Um, and by the way, by the way, they used to be a very good program. They actually were yeah. a decent program at one point. They're a really fun team. The the I remember when you'd watch Max A. Smith and Oral Roberts, like they'd play them every once in a while, and you'd be like, oh, you know, they're in that fun conference with all the Dakotas for basketball. I think it's like the Summit, maybe. Yes, it is the Summit. Like that's how I know them as a basketball. And, 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 and also, they're program. they're also in the uh, well. It's the uh, I think it was what conference are they in actually? God knows, but I know they're in the summit for basketball. Who cares? I mean, I, I I should definitely know considering they're in YSU's conference. It's the oh, uh, oh, wow, oh, they're not. Right. Never mind. They are not in they're that the big South. South. They're, they're in the, the big, big South. South. They didn't. I was looking at expansion for other ones. The horizon's yeah. weird, like, dude. Like, it, Youngstown State plays like San Diego in the conference game. I know Harbaugh was yeah. talking about that on part of my take. They have a the rivalry game yeah. with Dayton. I'm like, wait, what? Dayton, Ohio, San Diego, mm-hmm. California is a rivalry game. Yeah. Whatever. Apparently. Uh, All time horrible yeah, uh, story, though. He's like, we just showed up after beating him twice and said, "Hey, there's a trophy now." Yeah, which is like hilarious. <laughs> God, um, yeah. Guy. So uh, that game was a blowout. Uh, the, the next game of the night, the nightcap, a fun game to sleep. sleep. A really, it, it fun was an game interesting game. Indiana. So Northwestern yeah. hosted Duke. Uh, Bleak Murphy uh, for Duke played out of his mind in the uh, in the second half and in overtime. He went berserk. Uh, this game, I think the over under was 40 points, 13 10 with three minutes left. And then, did anyone uh, see the Duke wind? The, game. the yes. wind was incredible. That first kick, the that wind. Went in. How did he make that? <laughs> yeah, the plates were shaking and the flags were parallel. What What do we think of the stadium, though? I love it. I don't care. Absolutely. I, I, think, it's, I think it's cool. I want to go. I think it's so cool. cool. But guess what? When you guys get to play there, just like us, they're going to put it in Wrigley. You know they are. Because For me, it's like when Hobart plays hockey. It's like, you know, D, you can go like on the glass of like super high level D3. Yep. And it's like, this yeah. is like free, awesome stuff. Like, and yep. it's ridiculously yeah. expensive to get in. But just like being that low is sick. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so then we'll move on. Uh, we already kind of, we'll just skip our games first. We'll start with... Uh, Bowling Green and Penn State. It was a, it was a bloodbath. It was the game. Um, just quickly, I'm sorry. It was just like last week. Michigan was in a dog fight, and I just kept looking up at that corner, and I saw Bowling Green ahead and close, and I'm like, just please, God, give me an upset that's embarrassing. Like, I don't know, uh, top 10 team to a max school at home, favored by 20 plus. I'm like, just give me one of those. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. going to say this. It, it should have happened. It should have happened. Like, this. This was Bowling Green blowing this game, not Penn State winning this game. Was it actually that bad? Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched a snap. I haven't watched a replay. I haven't yeah. I kind of detox from football. I, I mean, I'm going to tell you what. That Penn State defense was bad. They're my fantasy like, defense. They must got negative points to a back school. I mean, they Come got on. dominated. They got dominated. So like Blake keeps trying to trade to me. I benched them. For, I benched Indiana for them. Indiana defense has more points than Ashton Jutney. That's insane. They have like hundred I mean, points in the defense. I mean, you you had a team here that uh, look, Bowling Green is not that great of a passing team. They they like to run the rock. Connor Baslick go nuts. Come on. And, and yeah, he, I, mean, he, I mean, he had two hundred fifty four yards and two touchdowns. I mean, that look Penn State. Bad game. Maybe it was hangover because they were all hyped up for West Virginia and they pounded West Virginia. I don't know. They escaped with a win, though. They they didn't yeah. 
it was more or less Bowling Green cut, lost the game than Penn State winning the game. That's crazy. I had no idea. I saw right. they were down at the half, and I was like, "Yeah, now uh, that was that was an interesting game." If we're moving uh, on, unless you want to keep going on this game, no, I have the, I, I, uh, I watch the nap. I couldn't tell you a thing. Yeah. Uh, so the next game we'll move on to was was the rivalry Iowa State Iowa with an absolute terrible collapse at the end of the game. What um, happened in this game? I don't, seriously, I don't know. I saw that they were up big, like three scores. I, uh, up nineteen to six, or yeah, yeah nineteen that to game, seven. That's like nineteen to five seven. scores. Nineteen seven. Yeah. I look, just an absolute collapse by Iowa. Cade looked great in the first half. I mean, Iowa was moving the ball down the field, throwing the ball down the field. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, Iowa. And then yeah. I, I kind of, like, tailed off a little bit, started watching other games. And then my buddy texts me, and he goes, I got a lot of money riding on Iowa. They need to come out, and they need to win. And I said, what are you talking about? It was like 19 to 7. It's a blowout. And he goes, oh, no, I was in full choke mode. And I said, what? It, it, just shocking. Like They just they just needed one more first down, and this game would have been over. And it ended up being a punt that led to a, a driving down the field in, what, one, two, three, four, five, six. Five in plays. Five, in five plays, they drove down the field. Yeah. Kicked an absolute I benched the receiver that went crazy. Goal. Yeah. I had and the receiver that went Kate crazy gets, on my bench, and I benched him. I didn't know. I was like, Iowa State against Iowa. Give me a break. And then, and then here, here's what's crazy. Iowa took back the kickoff to Iowa State's basically the 50-yard line. Yeah. And they just needed – and they, they had six seconds. They just needed to throw a quick out, and Cade throws a pass five yards, and it's intercepted, and the game's yeah. over. Like, yeah. like, they didn't even give it a chance. And by the way, so if you go by GameCast and the percentage, Iowa was a 90.4% chance to win when they punted the ball. And they lost because they thought the defense would hold up. And look, it was just a total collapse. And, and you know what? That's another place. Kinnick was rocking. It was loud on TV. And if it's loud on TV, you know it's loud on the field. because they over tra- Huh? Did our overhead it had to, right? Um, oh, the over, yeah, the overhead. The overhead. Be, right? cool. and I think we do we both quarter. predicted cozy. I know I did. I said if you win her by a field goal, I was wrong, but I yeah, I had Iowa winning it. I thought Iowa was gonna win. And so. while we're on this topic quarter. really was... quickly, there might be a bubble popping with this Iowa offense. You could have gotten Caleb Johnson. I know he had two in this game. He was plus three hundred to score. Okay. The starting running back of a power five team should not be that high. Sorry. Correct. I know, I know it's easy yeah. to say he's first touchdown too. So Iowa's offense is sneaky good. I know they scored only 19 points. They're at least moving the ball. Last year, they couldn't even move yeah. the ball. Fake stat, but Blake Analytics, they led the country in three outs last year. Probably a fake stat. Uh, guess what? I'm, can I'm can I also I'm say this? Through. And look, I, I know you want to go for two points and stuff like that, but – Dude, you're up 19 to 7. And it felt like when they didn't get the two point conversion to make it 21 to 7, it was just a backbreaker. And then you literally gave up a 75 yard touchdown pass, one play on the next drive. And it was like you just felt the whole momentum shift. And you saw the Iowa State sideline like, dude, Iowa went down and scored. It was 13 to 7. And then they scored. They went for two. And then it was like, boom, just like, all gone with the two-point conversion. And I'm just like, why not just kick the extra point? Just make it 20 to 7. Like, don't, like, do it. All in all, a Kirk Ferentz, like, he dominates Iowa State. That's the other thing. He dominates. He dominates. Uh, it's like Kansas he, State over Kansas. They win every year. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Iowa dominates this rivalry in the past, like, 25 years. They literally lose, like, what, twice? Maybe three yeah. times? They always win a game, and it's weird. Like, they always win this game, and then they lose this game in the weirdest way. So, that that's that that's our Big Ten our Big Ten team. Although, we can run down some other games. Um, uh, kind of uh, go through. Like Rhode, I- Rhode Island, Minnesota, 48-0 Minnesota. Yep. I didn't watch a single minute of that game. Nope. Um, Rutgers, 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 Akron. Hey, 
Fun fact here, Rutgers scored 40-plus points two games in a row for the first time in the history of their program. And half it's that wow. Magana guy. Yeah. And seriously, yeah. though, that that's amazing because they were the first team in college football, and they scored 40 points for the first time. Back-to-back games. <laughs> Um, back to back games. Yeah, 49 17. I didn't watch a single yeah. minute of that game either. I didn't watch either. Um, no, uh, Washington, Eastern Michigan. Washington won 30 to 9. I saw Eastern Michigan scored first. Never had freaking out on Twitter that Eastern Michigan scored first on Washington. And then Washington just absolutely dominated them. Will Rogers, Will Rogers looked pretty good. Um, yep. And Jonah Coleman. Jonah Coleman's. Dog fight. I'm going to that game. It's going to be a dog fight. And I Jonah expect looked easy pretty legit so far. Um, that's that's going to be a that's going to be a problem. Oh, uh, a, Wisconsin! A very scary, scary season start for Wisconsin. Wisconsin wins twenty-seven to thirteen over South Dakota, and Don't they worry. have Alabama Don't coming to town. Don't worry. Yeah, exactly. Don't worry. They got an easy guy this week. They just got some uh, Alabama. Ooh. Spreads only yeah. sixteen, dude. They might. I said earlier in the chat as a joke, fifty-two to three was my prediction. Yeah. I could see. I mean, they their spread offense is not. It's not working. Uh, I mean, it's only the second year, though. They got to get they got to get people in there. I mean, give yeah. him four years. Every other seen. team is flipped over in one year. I don't want to hear this yeah. for two years. You want to bring yeah. in a spread offense and Tyler Van Dyke is your option? I hey, look, I, I don't know what to say. Um, we can talk about the two other big Big Ten key wins. Yeah, we'll talk about hmm. the two teams. At the end, I just wanted to touch one more. Uh, USC played the night night cap. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Utah State. Everybody thought that they might – I mean, some people thought that they might have a little bit of a sleeper to, after their first week. Uh, I did. And they just – and they absolutely dominated. They, they, looked, start they looked great. They looked awesome. They Spencer looked, Petrus because he was hurt, and they somehow got worse at quarterback. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they just dominated um, the entire game. It wasn't – it was never close. I, uh, I didn't even watch any USC. I, I'm I didn't be worried about USC long term. Yeah. Um, this these night games they normally would be like sleepwalking through with Lincoln. Defense looks all right. I know it's the guy worse than Spencer Petras, which is crazy. But but what, what, what I'm in a I'm in for a dog fight in like six games this year and whatever. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna yeah. So now we. I don't care. I'm sorry. Now, now. Yeah. We, no, it's all right. Can we can we talk about the Buffaloes and the Cornhuskers? Because I really want to talk yeah. about this game. Because I yeah, want to go start. in on Colorado right now. Shiloh yeah, Sanders. Shiloh Sanders and your comments at the coin oh. flip. We gonna kick your ass today, really? And then Shadur leaves the game with two minutes left. Are you kidding me? I loved every second of it. I loved it. And then the pick six, too. That was the, I, and honestly, that may have been the craziest I've ever seen a stadium go. That place yeah. was nuts. See, that's why I love college football because people in this Twitter dialogue and discourse, it's, it's so tiring. They talk about how, like, this team is mid. You know, like, people are like, oh, Missouri is mid. Like, dude, they went like 11 and two last year. Co- Teams like Northwestern, like uh, Northwestern, these Twitter fan bases, and I know it's not cozy. It's the rest of his fan base and the bandwagons in my fan base and these fake SEC Bama fans, all that stuff. They don't understand, dude. Like, you still get up for these games. I don't care if you're six. In, like, if Michigan, God forbid, is like, you know, a, I don't know, not a great team. Like, if we beat some of these teams, like, in, like, crazy fashion, like, if we're, I'm on the road against Washington and we beat him like, a crazy last-second field goal or something, I will go nuts. Like this is the Super Bowl for like Nebraska. They know what they are, and oh, I appreciate small. that. And and now they're getting cocky on Twitter. By all means, you should. The, like the way your quarterback is cosplaying Mahomes, you got one game on the schedule. You probably are going to lose. Like they did sneaky, like run the table outside Ohio State. One but problem. Again, a Big Ten stinks. One problem. I cannot stand the Dylan or uh, Rayola acting like he's. Pat Mahomes right now. I can't stand it. Other than that, I am all for see you in Indy, Nebraska. I would love to see you there. I'm still, I'm not guaranteeing we're going to be there because we do have tough road games at Oregon and Penn State. But I'm just, I I, I am. I'm being a You want to be nice. Dude, if you don't win this conference, everyone needs to go. 
This conference yeah. is sucks. Sucks. Uh, yeah. So I mean, that game twenty-eight to ten, uh, Nebraska controlled this pretty much the entire game. Uh, Did they pick them the off on like the first half, drive or something? I don't know if I made yeah, it. Yeah. No. Off. So they they scored a touchdown and then they backed them up. They pinned them deep and yep. Shadur threw an interception right to the defender, which was the pick six. The place went it, nuts. It was so funny. It was so funny. <laughs> I, I mean, it was it was twenty eight nothing, and Nebraska literally called off the dogs in the second half. Like they just yeah, were they out were. there going through emotions. And I mean, so, Shadur, like I, I just I don't get why, like I don't get. And then you have Travis Hunter yelling at Dion, and you it, it was just an yeah, absolute. I didn't that. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. He lost. It. He went nuts and started yelling at Dion at one point during the game, and. I mean, it was just an all-out Nebraska. Like this was like the the epitome of like we are back. Nebraska is back, yeah. and I am I'm excited about it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie; they might be the second best team in this conference. It's yeah, like, they look really good through two games. Now it's two games, and look, I get that we're, we're just it's literally like I said, two games, but. Man, do they look good. We could, have, we could have swept the Big 12 this week if we really had our ducks in a row in, in Iowa because, man. I mean, I mean, let's go to that other Big 12 game that, game that was played awesome. out. Shout, that played out, out. shout out the line I dude. What a that played game. out, and no one believed in them on this podcast. I had no for faith. one person who said they were going to beat them on, on Saturday night. They were a touchdown yeah. dog, and you took them outright. Beast. Beast. I'm yeah. telling you right now, I knew it. Kansas is overrated as hell. I knew it. And you know what? Illinois, here's the problem. Or here's not the problem, but, like, they actually have a good coach. I can't stand them, but they have a good coach Three. who knows how to win it on Twitter, but he's a beast. They, they literally I, – I just, I just for some reason knew that they were going to win this game. Like, I, I mean, I would have looked like a fool. I'm probably going to look like a fool – a lot of times this season at some point where I'm going to pick an upset or something like that. And it's just going to come back and bite me. And, but I'm going to tell you what, Illinois, they fight till the end. They yeah. were, they, I mean, there was times where I thought, Oh man, we're looking, we're looking at Kansas going up 24 to um, 13. And then they fought right back and they took the lead and it was like, okay, we got this. We got this. Come on. Come on. Finish this thing out. Um, I don't know about the field goal at the end of the game, though. That was a little I, – I, I don't know about that. That that kind of que- – I really want to question that a little bit because you were at – look, I get it was fourth and 14. You were at the 25. But, like, some of the play calling down towards the end, I mean, it was a little bit questionable – from the Illinois side, I felt like they were just kind of like, honestly, like I, I didn't like it down the stretch. I got really nervous because I'm like, okay, you're being really conservative here. I know you want to waste time, but they actually have a good quarterback on the other side of the field. So I don't, other than that, great, great win for the conference, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I'm glad they went nuts. I don't know if they stormed the field or not, but I, I don't they know. Did. Oh, oh, they did. They yeah, did? Good. 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 Of course. Like a 20 matchup, but I'm not shocked. That I was like asking legitimate questions if Michigan would storm the field to beat Texas. That's where yeah. we're at. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the last game before talking about the rest of our games, uh, the absolute one, probably one of the best games I've watched um, so far this season, Boise State, uh, Oregon. Oregon wins by three. I mean, let's just say it how it is. Oregon got very, very lucky that they didn't lose oh. this game because they got – Dominated, dominated in the trenches. Even more lucky, um, the game was on Peacock. I, I, I was yeah. going to say the game was on Peacock. They got dominated in the trenches. They've gotten dominated two weeks in a row in the trenches, and one was against Idaho. Idaho. I'm, to be yeah, fair, I mean, Idaho didn't they beat Washington or Wyoming? I, I'm pretty sure they beat Wyoming as like a two touchdown, not dog, but like they were a big dog and they went out right. It was a big thing. Someone yeah. gets, that's what Oregon fans were telling me. Yeah, I think that happened. When you're a top five preseason team 
and you're out here doing uh, what's it called gymnastics with the um, what is it like the when you compare what is it yeah the, the math yeah. thing you're talking about yeah. yes yeah yep. the math analogy where you compare things I don't know why yes. I can't think of it right now but, I, um, I um we'll just move on we don't we're we're really you know um, what I mean we're football out you know what you know what honestly um who cares I, we just, we know what you mean. Yeah, but yeah, Ashton Genty, of course. Ashton Genty, of course, dominates the game. Um, uh, has two huge touchdowns in the fourth right. quarter. Um, and I hate making this about betting all the time. What is the line in your game, Cozy, with them? Oh, with us? Yeah, I don't think you can take it yet. <sighs> Hold on, I'm gonna Google I, real quick. Actually, keep going. no, all right. it, it, it's up on ESPN bets. Hold on. It is up on ESPN bets. I saw it the other day. Because look, dude, I feel like it's three and a half. I don't want again. I know I always keep doing this, where I'm always end up find myself like mostly. It's I don't see it on any of the books right now. But it it is it is a one and a half point favorite for the Oregon Ducks. Get get serious. I've said the whole time you're not going to lose this game. The fact the line hasn't moved. Like I don't get seriously. I don't understand how the Michigan line is moving so much. I get we're bad, but like. We have a good defense. They have no defense. They have no offense. Well, they have an offense. Here, here's the take. Oregon is built like an old Lincoln Riley team. I don't care. I'll say it. They have this crazy yeah. offense. They dink and dunk. They do all this stuff. They have speed and space. You know, shout out Josh Gaddis. Um, and and they're just in absolute dogfights the entire time. And they're sneaking out wins. Like this is the type of game I would have expected from U- USC at midnight. Not what Oregon's doing. I don't. Does UFC have the best? Is the USC the best team out of the new new joiners? Which is crazy to say. I'd say so far, I'm yeah. Not, if, if, I, I, I mean, can't get there this quick, but I just give it give it a few weeks because you're not comparing Michigan and Oregon. Last year's Michigan, last year's Michigan stunk for the first time. I'm gonna say this: they might not win this week in Corvallis. Because guess who runs the football really well and has a pretty good offensive line? Oregon State. Yeah. That yeah. line I mean, is throwing me off, dude. It's throwing me off. I don't I mean, know. There's, why no I way that they, there's no way Oregon covers against Oregon State this week. I can't you know, see it. You know, you, you, How you, is you it? Know what the, you, you can't have it wrong this bad three weeks in a row. And, and by the way, yeah. here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Not only that, you got to understand this. It's in Corvallis. Those all these play people, possessed. All these people are going to be rabid about. I swear to God, I said I thought this spread was going to be six and a half, seven. Here's yeah, the thing. No, this is this is back this is a road game. That Oregon fans are not going to be able to get tickets to slash travel to as well as they normally can. Oregon State fans are all hyped up and they're pissed off because you left them in the dust. This is like legitimately personal, and it does suck. Yes. That they added top teams to the Pac-12 this week, oh, or this know. week, this morning. Yeah. I know. It yeah, this morning. With that because it had been so sick. Like you left us on an island, and we just stole your lunch money. We ended yep. your season. Yeah. This would be a bad loss to Oregon. Any loss would be well, bad. But come on. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now. Oregon has a major problem on that line on both sides. Yeah. Be like line offensive line again. Oregon would have gotten their ass beat by Texas. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the gap between Michigan and Oregon is that big. That might end back killing me. Like, I might get killed. You know, old takes exposed. I seriously don't think it's that big of a difference. Like, you couldn't tell me. Like, it, it, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ashton Genty, his line went from live 100 to 1 to 50 to 1 in the course of the game to win the Heisman. And he, he just – I mean, there's, there's – Yeah. Cozy, your team's awesome. Who cares? Zach, take a bow. Okay. You're at the top of the Big Ten. Go for it. Sorry, Cozy. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I mean, uh, big win this week against Maryland, 27 um, 24. Still win. some error. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, 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 no. New adjective, not big win. You uh, went on the road as a, I don't know how you were only a seven point dog. I thought, I literally would say you've been a two touchdown underdog. Program defining win. I know it's crazy to say. I'd say era defining win. Continue. I gotta gas you up. Yeah, give me one on. second. Here we go. Good. Pull up something good because you guys dominated them. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, 
Yeah, we, we, it's it's kind of a, it's a huge thing to, to boost the program from where it was last year to where it is now. Um, to start off two and zero and take half of our win total in the first two weeks against a quality conference opponent. The September Maryland is dead. Uh, the years and years of September Maryland dominating is, is it's hypothetically dead. Um, they still have such an easy schedule on some weeks where they can dominate the rest of the month of September, but it, it, just, it just wasn't bound to happen this year. Um, I think that there was a couple of mistakes that we made throughout the game, um, especially right before half. We kind of had an error where we ran the clock out and had to settle for a field goal, which I think just scored a touchdown and went up by a touchdown there. Uh, defensively, there's some things that they needed to clean up third down, especially. Um, they were giving up some third and fives, third and sixes, which was kind of like our theme of last year. But at the same time, like as the game progressed, it went from they scored for everybody. Oh, this it was be a long day, but it was like we kind of drove down the field, scored a touchdown. There's a pass. Uh, I think the first one was a foster, and then uh, game kept going. Uh, Childs threw an interception. That was a really bad pick. I mean, he's just he's just young. I'm still not going to use it as an excuse, but he's still young. It's going to take time to, to develop. But he made some big plays when it mattered most. Uh, the next one was to, to, to Glover, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, kind of like a nice, nice pass over the, over the middle. Their defenseman had no clue what was going on. Back and forth, uh, we made a 50-yard 50, 50 field goal, Jonathan Kim. He's always – I mean, if you look at him on the sideline, it's nuts. Because if you look at the end of the game, they showed him for the last two minutes just walking around smiling. I guess instead of practicing picks, he was throwing the ball around, like practicing throws. And, and he's like – he's just a very religious man. And every time he's like, I don't know about it. It's God, you know, no matter what. I'm just going to go out there and do what I was born to do. And it's like that type of mindset is kind of crazy because it's like it doesn't matter the distance. Uh, what happens? Um, he's ready for it. Uh, the big play of the game was a, a nice pass, 77 yards to Nick Marsh, which was like his big intro game to the college football world as a freshman. Uh, what, eight or nine catches? I think it was eight catches, 194 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, his big like introduction to like I'm here, I'm ready to I'm ready to go as a freshman. I mean, it's a common theme now where. A couple of our teams have big receivers, big freshman receivers that will make a huge impact right off the bat, which is kind of a big deal. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Charles, three, 363 yards, the eighth most in school history for a single game and three touchdowns, three interceptions, which one got changed to a fumble. Yeah, but still, yeah well, so one got changed. Yeah, one got changed, but it's still – I mean, still the errors. Um, a couple of plays were just, like, put away. Uh, there was one play where it was third and – well, and he ran the ball and didn't reach out the ball, and it would have been a first down, and we punted. It's just like those little errors. I'm guessing that we'll see it right off the bat. But um, overall, I mean, very, very intriguing win, especially going into conference play and saying that, like, we're serious. We're ready to we're ready to do this. We're ready to see where we're at. Top of the big pen for, for the temporary right, time. Trump would we'll, say stop the count. Yeah, stop the count. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, I mean, think, overall, about game. think about this. If you're a Sparty fan, Michigan loses, Notre Dame loses, Lions win on a great last drive. The game sucked. Yeah. Well, heck, the Lions went to overtime. It's embarrassing. Not an NFL podcast. Um, yeah. And then you go on the road and you win. I mean, what would that parlay have paid out? <laughs> yeah. Especially, I especially. I mean, Hutz, big win Jr., too. Hutz Jr.'s got to be so happy right oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we're running the ball. As great as I would hope, but we're still running the ball probably about five yards a carry, which is good a good push right up the front. Um, How is your 17-year-old I mean, quarterback have more confidence than mine? Hey, it was his, actually when we were recording this, it's his birthday, and he turned 19 today, so that's a pretty Happy pretty birthday. big deal. Childs. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the 19-year-old quarterback, he has that – I mean, everybody talked about – does he have – I mean, he ha, it's known he has kind of that it factor. I mean, he was always a highly touted recruit, and he kind of has that factor where he has that confidence. But it, it's starting to show on the field, uh, especially in a game where we looked so shaky last week, didn't really score a whole lot of points. None in the second half. Um, to come back out and do what they did, it's a big deal. Blake. Yes, Blake. C 
see what elite quarterback play does to other teams. Nebraska and Michigan State are having statement victories. And my Michigan fans are still telling me recruiting doesn't matter. CJ Carr, you got Don, you got Dante Moore, you got Bryce Underwood. Dude, look, okay? You need a good quarterback to play good football games. I'm trying not to freak out. Somebody told me, and, and this is kind of off topic, and then we'll go to Cozy, but somebody told me, last week that SMU plays better when they play for a specific player. And I didn't believe it, but they put in the backup over Preston Stone and you could just see the players want to play tough for a good, like a quality quarterback that they want because they want him to start and now they're starting him. But like players want to play for, I wouldn't even say elite. I would just say great quarterback leadership. Leadership is a big thing. I would think and that's what you can see as a change. So cozy, take it away for your uh, big win. Um. Well, let's see here. Where I'm glad Jeremiah Smith is on my fantasy team. Continue. Ah, uh, yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. Yeah, con- again, so, congrats, Ohio State, top of the MAC. Sorry, I'll, I'll keep filling the, the yeah. Spots. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, look, it's Western Michigan, but. After the way the MAC played and the way Western Michigan played against Wisconsin last week, I was like, okay, let's just come out and take care of business. Let's not mess around. Um, let's see. They had 10 three and outs. Um, we had over 600 yards of offense. Will Howard looked good. Um, Devin Brown looked okay. Julian Sayan looked pretty damn awesome coming in in the fourth That's quarter. That's pretty nuts. Um Look, 10 three and outs. They had 55 yards on one drive and 99 yards. Or was it 99 or was it less than that? Um, It was, yeah, 99 yards of total offense and they had 55 on one drive. They did get to attempt a field goal and they missed it. (laughs) Um, Get out, baby. (laughs) Clean sheet, uh, bro. Look, there's nothing to write home about and – I mean, 2025 Heisman Trophy winner Jeremiah Smith looked awesome. Um, but I will say this. There was one underthrow, and I don't – I think it was a miss route or a broken route ran by Jeremiah Smith that he wanted to go long and Will Howard did not want to go long. And I think it was one of those like, hey uh, – I'm going to go long. It's a freshman mistake because Will Howard kind of said my bad, but it, you just kind of got the feeling that it was not on Will Howard. Um, other than that, um, yeah, we could move on because it was boring and now we have a bye week and I'm bored as hell. I mean, look at this. I, I don't want to say that it's boring. I enjoyed every minute of it and I thoroughly will enjoy every minute of this Buckeye season because we are that damn good i said this dude you guys are literally word for word bar for bar copying the michigan last year playbook and it was michigan would just kill people boringly early on yep and 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 here's the thing i don't want to get too ahead of myself like i said we got to go to oregon we got to go to penn state um we have we have uh patty mahomes and nebraska coming in i mean hey we got kate and iowa coming in too i mean that high powered passing offense We'll see what happens. I mean, there's going to be bumps in this road. I mean, we go to the Big Ten leader, Michigan State, in two weeks. So it's not a cakewalk. We'll see what happens, but we can move on. Yeah, that's going to be really um, intriguing to me because I a very different thought in the beginning of the year. I don't know how that game is going to go. And, like, if we – I mean, it might still be a tough game. I mean, it'll probably be – it'll probably be – I mean, realistically, it'd probably be a blowout still because Ohio State has has kind of done that to us for a while. But at least uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, are we making okay. a friendly wager on it? Uh, no, we're we're gonna we'll wager uh, friendship in East Lansing the week of the game. <laughs> you guys go. played some of this year? Uh, no. Yeah, huh? in two weeks. Do. Yeah, two weeks. And well, yeah, we play Boston College than them. Or yeah, so. Oh my yeah, God. Boston College than them. We and we have yes. a bye, and then we play hey, March. And then we play. You already got more wins in that gauntlet than I thought you were going to. So, hey, hand up. Good job. Yeah. Um, Should we fly through these yeah, games? I mean, 
Georgia played a high school team. Who cares? Yep. Oh my God, my Bulls look so good. I don't know if anyone that was like actually a game I watched. Oh jeez. My Bulls should have taken the lead. They played so well. I know the game. If you box score watch, you're like they end up getting their ass beat. Dude, it was a one score yeah. game the yeah. entire game. Yeah, but here's the thing: yeah. you've got to understand, and you want to say box score watch. I mean, Alabama scored what four touchdowns in a matter of like nine minutes. minutes, four minutes. They went. Yeah, Florida, South Florida kicked the field goal instead of going for it on fourth and goal, and the game ended. As soon as they kicked oh, the field, I knew it was and, over. I, obviously, I didn't think that they were going to rip off four touchdowns on like for four plays. Yeah. They're going to yeah. give Miami uh, a hell of a run. I'm telling you, they're going to sneak one of these out. My Bulls yeah. are going to be a problem. Yeah, if we're just running through games, uh, Kansas State had an absolute crazy game. I think they picked up a fumble and scored a touchdown yep. and then scored another touchdown back to back. Um, the legend, Ohio State legend, Kyle McCord has another great game. Uh, 31 28. He needs to be in the Heisman back. discussion right now because he won't long He's term. Rough. It's very funny to see him now. Is he leading the country yeah. in yards and passing and all that stuff? Like his oh, I hope so. Uh, I hope so. Uh, no, Jackson Dart is his third. Oh, there you go. Uh, Darts, Darts uh, played Gross Point South High School and Lance Cruz North. Um, <laughs> bad beat of the um, week. Have to go to Arkansas State plus seven and a half betters. Oh, my God. Yeah. You lose in overtime by eight. <laughs> I have Jaquindon uh, Jackson and the, the green kid on my fantasy team somehow. Those boys are a problem. That is a fun team to watch, Arkansas. Uh, do you the want to touch we, on the game Tennessee we, and NC State? Yeah, the game, the game we all circled. The game we all circled, uh, Tennessee and NC State. We can do it now because uh, there's not really many other ranked versus ranked games. The ACC um, might be real bad. Really bad. Really Nico bad. Very fun to watch. Oh my God! Really bad because this was throws, he throws he's just slinging it. He's either throwing picks or he's not the best player on the team. I, I told everyone here, and he's on my fantasy team. Samson, the running back, is a problem. This Tennessee team can run and throw when you need to. This team next year is be really, 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 really good. Really good. Yeah. Or NC State is really bad. Think oh, it, it could be. Uh, well, I don't know. It, everything went wrong for NC State, including the mascot getting. <laughs> <laughs> hit in the ball. I didn't even see it. So oh, I turned it off. See it? oh, there was a play where the ball bounced and it literally just nailed the mascot. And uh, yeah, he went down and it was quite funny. And it was just like, even the announcer was like, everything's going wrong for NC State tonight. I mean, yeah. it, it was it was a pit, pitiful performance. Um, I, I was really hoping NC State would do something because I actually have them winning the ACC and who knows, they might. Because the ACC is bad, real yeah. bad. Hey, just get ready for uh, OSU versus Syracuse in a playoff semifinal game. No, well, they can't uh, win the game. If we're the, only, just... the only out was some team in the Big Ten not to totally suck and win the conference somehow, and you play a home playoff game with McCord. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so now, if we're just flying through the next week's oh, games, man, that would be uh, so funny. Nothing, nothing, Nothing all that exciting. Uh, Wisconsin, Alabama, like we said, Alabama. Oklahoma was in a dog fight. Uh, Cam Rising died again. Yeah, um, if we're go- if we're going through Arkansas State, Michigan, like like I said, Central Michigan, Illinois, Oregon, whoa, Oregon State, which is going to be probably whoa 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell are you doing? We're going through next week's games. I said, Hey, Notre Dame. Yeah, we're not oh, having yeah, yeah. Notre Dame in Northern Illinois. Jack, the upset of the year just happened. Who cares look, that Michigan lost to a top 10 okay. national championship contending look, team? Here's the hey, thing. Hey, one of the guess what, funniest... Notre Dame? Thanks for taking the heat off me. No one cares, idiots. Well, I will say this. It did look familiar to an upset that had a blocked field goal at the end of the game. Oh. Do you remember the last time that happened between a uh, very bad team and a blocked field goal at the end of the game? Oh, App State I'm happened, and then Northern oh, Illinois. Give me a break, dude. Listen, listen, listen. It shouldn't have come down to that. That spot at the end of the game was the oh. worst spot. It was worse than JT was short. I'll say it. I, he was – because JT was short, you at least have angles where it looked like he was short. This dude was two, maybe three yards past. I thought they were viewing it for targeting because I was like, what the hell are they reviewing for? He's short. They called it on the field short. And then call confirmed. Confirmed is insane. Like it was 
14 on what? I don't know how many refs are in football. God knows. It was like 18 on one out there, or 18 on 11 out there. And I love that coach. We're a Maction podcast. We all know about that coach. That guy's a beast. Okay. And I'm glad they won. And there's nothing funnier than seeing these teams. The tweet right after the game, what they paid him $1.4 million to get their ass 1. beat. 1.6. 1. And I don't know if anyone's yeah. seen it. The yeah. coolest thing is that boneyard that they have in their in the athletic department where they yeah. beat yeah. teams, like big teams. Dude, that is sick. Sick. Yep. And then he was on part of my take this week after they had Freeman on. My guy. I, I love that guy. I don't even know the guy's name. I spat on you for not knowing his name. Shut out them. The fact they're ranked is embarrassing. But they have one hard game left on the schedule. That is North Carolina State. That team stinks. They can make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, hey, yes. it, may, uh, it may be the back door for the Mac to get a team in since Miami blew it against them. I think they get in because Liberty yeah. play like crap. I know they end up winning. They play like crap. Um, I don't know because Memphis played Florida State this week and they could have Memphis. I mean, up yeah, also, boy. Also, we can't forget about. Also, we can't forget about Boise. Yeah, Boise too. I mean, they just played Oregon very tough. This so their game, they had to win that game and they lost it. Well, yeah. I we'll see. We'll see, but. Yeah, Notre Dame, bad loss. I mean, you're at home, the home opener again. Uh, this is the second time Freeman's lost a home opener against a very bad opponent. He lost to Marshall two years ago, and then you literally come out and you lose to Northern Illinois. Dude, He's I, we got to really have a discussion about him because his time is kind of short. He can't win big games. Oh, sorry, he does win big games, can't win the, the bad games. What, yeah. Jackson, Marshall, and Stanford? Yeah. Yeah. So that means that they're going to beat USC is what I'm hearing. Oh, I'm not going that far. But, um, now we now we can move on to this week. And you skipped over yeah. the biggest game, America's game of the week, Arizona at Kansas State. I haven't. We're going through the Big Ten right now. Arizona played like crap game. last week. But we'll, I, I know they, they played did. northern. They played northern Arizona. Northern Arizona. I know. Yeah, I know. And they played know. horrible. Uh, Yes, Oregon, Oregon State, Notre Dame with their bounce back game. They're Purdue. That might be a little trappy per, per, trap. Per, Purdue's going to win that game. Yeah, uh, Purdue's going to win that. Michigan, game. State, Michigan State. We play Prairie View A&M. Purdue's playing uh, some good ball, man. Uh, Minnesota plays Nevada. Washington plays Washington State. Isn't that the Apple? They call it the Apple Cup, right? The Apple Cup. Yep. A lot of really good rivalry. Um, the card stinks is one ranked game, but it's a lot of rivalry games. You got the Civil War, you got the Apple yeah. Cup, and you got the backyard brawl. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Iowa plays Troy. Uh, Northern Iowa plays Nebraska. This is a, this is a very intriguing game. I would say this is probably the most intriguing game of the week for the Big Ten. UCLA, Indiana. I think that's a really big, really big game Ooh. to show if, if Indiana is really good or not. If, if Indiana um, scores – Three touchdowns, they might win this game. They need three touchdowns. Total is 45 yeah. and a half. What's that, 24-21? Yeah. Yeah, they need three touchdowns. Yeah. I'm telling you. They need three touchdowns. Uh, Northwestern plays Eastern Illinois, and then Maryland plays Virginia, uh, which Maryland's a couple points. Fred, now we're looking at top 25 that overall. I think it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Maryland, Virginia, because Virginia's very bad. V- top 25 Maryland- game. If Maryland loses, if Maryland loses, it's it's a pat. It's going to be bad. I, we didn't even talk about it because I don't know how I missed it. I I've been praying on a Josh Gaddis game like that for a long time. It just sucks it had to happen against Sparty. Yeah, this Josh Gaddis. Once I saw him on the sideline, I'm like, oh no, not this guy again. Every time we just play him all the time, and we beat him. Um, yeah, so the big game uh, tomorrow, Kansas State, Arizona, uh, eight o'clock tomorrow night. Um, should be interesting. I think that's a really intriguing game. I think Arizona could. I mean, we can we can talk more about that in a minute. But I think this is a game where Arizona could prove um, that they're not just falling apart. Uh, LSU, South Carolina with Cozy in attendance. Uh, yeah. That should be a good one. I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. This will be I've first seen SEC some experience. excellent signs already being made. Oh, yes. I've already yeah. seen plenty of Libby Dunn signs made. So um, I just – I, I'm intrigued to go to this. It's the first SEC experience that I'll have. Like I, I, we, I've been to bowl games where we played SEC teams, and that's been fun. But this is a whole new experience. Like this is going to be in Columbia. Um, Bring your towel. 
Yeah, I think. And Ruth Sandstorm, let's go. Yeah, yeah, Sandstorm. And also, we're going to be in a actual storm because the hurricane's going to hit South Carolina. Right now, 30 mile an hour winds, but it's going to feel like it's 85 degrees and it's going to rain. And we may, and we may get, they said there could be possibly up to six inches during the game. Like it's going to be a torrential downpour. I have we've kind of kicked the idea around that we're going to wear flip flops and bathing suits to the game. I would. That's exactly <laughs> what I would. That'd be so sick. That'd be so sick. Like I, awesome. I, I kind of feel like I might just rock a USA bathing suit during the game, and I have a, <laughs> uh, I actually have a maroon um, state of South Carolina flag shirt. So we're rocking that, and uh, my cox hat. So. Nice. Uh, next game. Yeah, I mean, it should be a great time. Uh, it, next it, game, Boston, Co- Boston College, Missouri. Okay, um, shocker yeah. here. A ranked matchup here. Is Boston College actually decent? I think – it's t- again, I'm just projecting here. I think the world's going to be betting on Boston College. Mizzou's been a wagon, dude. I know. Really I good. think Miz- Mizzou might be really good. I mean, they're playing no one, but – I mean, this would be a good test. I mean, Boston yeah. College will run the damn ball in your throat. So we'll, we'll see how good they are. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Utah, Utah, Utah State, Ole Miss, Wake Forest, uh, Georgia, Kentucky, which everybody's just like, eh. Brock Vandegrift uh, might be a, the only quarterback worse than mine right now. Yeah. He had like, he was. <laughs> I think they said well, the worst two offenses in the country analytically were Kentucky and South Carolina, like through the season so far, and one beat the other by twenty. Yeah, yeah. Take the under in South Carolina LSU this week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you also have a nightcap: Kent State at Tennessee. Which, yeah, good, good, good luck, Golden Flashes, but. It used this would have been a great over game a few years ago, but Kent State has nobody left. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. These MAC teams like it stinks that Northern Illinois is going to suck next year because everyone's going to be there somewhere else. So, yep. Um, other than that, I think that's all. Think I'm that's looking all at the ESPN graphic right now for the Michigan game, and every stat leader is Arkansas State guy. This is sickening. <laughs> yeah, they might have, a, they have a rush. They have a running quarterback. Oh my god. <laughs> Other than that, um, I guess we do want to do top five. Yeah, let's do top five. Posey, start us off. Uh, top, top five stadiums, stadiums that we haven't been that we want to go to. Okay. Uh, I want to go to Utah for sure. That is definitely one of the coolest environments, I think. Um, and along with that, I would like to hit BYU. If I could do a Friday night at BYU or Utah and then a Saturday game, that I think that would be an awesome environment to go to just because you have the mountains in the background and it's kind of cool. And I mean, both are just situated so great. Um, I want to go to Neyland. I want to experience Tennessee. Uh, I've heard great things about it. I've heard great things about their fans, things like that. Um, one of the places that we actually play this year, I want to go to Oregon really bad. It's such a small stadium and obviously tickets are through the roof. It's a very hard yeah, it's a very hard flight out there to find because you have to fly into Portland. You can't fly into Eugene. You have to rent a car. It's super expensive when your team is, like, playing out there. Um, it would almost be better if I flew into, like, Seattle and drove. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to happen this year, so it's definitely on the list. And then I want to go to a classic stadium. Um I want to go see the Cotton Bowl, and I want to see it Texas versus OU. I think that that is one of the greatest rivalries in all of college football, and I love that they are split right down the middle. Um, I'm a little biased because I have had a quarterback on the Browns team that is not named Baker Mayfield, but is Colt McCoy that I was pretty – pretty obsessed with as a Browns fan. So I have always been in the camp of Hook'em, even when we had Baker. Um, 
I would love to go wear my burnt orange and support Texas and just see them win. But I, here's the other thing that makes that rivalry great and slash whatever is that golden cowboy hat. That has got to be awesome to win that thing and then to wear it around. I mean, that thing has to weigh, what, 50 pounds? At least. And, and, and people least, are wearing it. Unless, unless it's like plated gold, but I doubt it, I, right? I, I don't know. I have no idea. But it's literally they wear it on their heads, and I'm just like, how are you wearing that on your head? It's got to be hard. But, but I, I, I want to see the Cotton Bowl. I think the Cotton Bowl has got to be like, amazing because it's such a classic stadium that it's just i don't know that's my classic stadium because like i mean i've been to miami i've been to jacksonville for a game i mean it's none of those stadiums are compared to what i would think cotton bowl would be um yeah if i'm going through um i'm gonna start at number five i'm gonna do a memorial at a night game, I think this I, I, this weekend really proved a lot. It really Which proved Memorial that this, Stadium. Which one are we going to Illinois? Or are we going to Nebraska? No, no, Nebraska, Nebraska. We're not going to Illinois. I'm going there this Michigan, year. Though. Michigan um, plays at Nebraska next year. I'm already scared about Nebraska, it. Nebraska, it Nebraska. I mean that game when they are playing like they did this weekend. Absolutely, not. I think that's uh, would be a great stadium to go to. Uh, I'm going to put number four. I'm going to do. I'll do LSU. I think LSU is a place that like is very well known, um, but I feel like that's a pretty good place to at least see a game once. Um, three, I'll go. I'll go Washington at three. Just like what Cozy was saying, I think Washington and Oregon are very similar in that they're a little bit smaller than typical. I mean, Ohio State, Michigan for sure, Penn State, but I mean the West Coast teams now being in part of the Big Ten. I think that's another stadium that absolutely electric when they're playing good. Um, and they've shown that in the last couple of years. Um, what was that? That's uh, – I'll do two. Uh, Tennessee, of course. Shocker. Blake got to witness it, but I, I would so love, I'll try to, would find love to witness it. Game. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then number one, because I've never been there, but the Rose Bowl. I think that's like one of the most iconic stadiums in all sports. And to at least go there once – with the tiny, tiny scoreboard that everybody complains about. And, uh, and just to at least witness one game there would be absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Someday they'll make it a bigger scoreboard. Or they won't. It'd be kind of funny. Um, Ohio State needs a new scoreboard, too. It's so tiny. When you're looking up at that thing, man, it's tiny. It's hard to I, see. Or it's I, or it's I kind of want to do funny caveats, but it's going to be tough to do funny caveats this time. Um, I can, let me see if I can cook real quick. I don't know. I'm with you Kennesaw on that one. I want uh, number Kennesaw five. State. What? Kennesaw, Kennesaw State. No, I, Kennesaw. Uh, I mean, seriously, number five for me is the, the Northwestern one right now. I'm not even kidding. Like I want to go there. I think it'd be a sick spot to hang out and see how small it is and how fun it is. I, I almost love these small stadiums. It's pretty funny. Um, I think, I mean, it's such a unique experience. If I can go by boat, that'd be sick. Um, I would say number four, Memorial Lincoln. I think I'm going to go there next year. Um, I think I'm going to try to do two road trips as much as I can until I have some sort of life responsibilities. So I think next year, pretty good. I mean, Michigan's schedule next year is great. I can go to at Oklahoma and at Nebraska. That's two solid games. Um, yeah. I will be going, I think, uh, say te Texas Memorial Stadium. How many memorials can I do? I, might, I could do a top five memorial stadiums. Uh, <laughs> I want to go to Texas Memorial Stadium. I think that's really cool. Um, number that would be number three, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, number two. This is where I'll start doing caveats. Uh, a sold out uh, Hard Rock with all Miami fans. I don't know if it'll ever happen. <laughs> it would be sick. I got. I've been to the no, place you don't. Out before with no, you don't. fans a lot. No, you don't. Uh, trust, trust me, me you don't want to go there. You I've don't. been there like six or seven times, more than that, with Dolphins fans, and it's been pretty fun. I think it's a pretty sick stadium. I went there when. It was all Tennessee fans, and they beat the hell out of Clemson. That was very fun. So, um, and then number one, um, oh, but I just forgot. I had a smart ass one. Oh, not even smart ass. I want to go to a uh, a Dion home game. I, I think that would be a sick experience. I, like the the Colorado State game last year was a game where I was like, I want to be there. That game was awesome. Um, I know this is a last year of coaching. I've said it for a long time. There's no, zero chance he's coaching after his kids leave. Um, so I'm running out of games, but. 
Uh, that'd be really cool to go to one of those games. So. I mean, after they end up going three and nine this year, yeah. Oh man, um, maybe <laughs> Mel Tucker was a better coach. Oh shit. Uh, all right. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we got for now. Um, yeah. Anything else we can add? Uh, I mean, just a rough week for the Big Ten. Michigan kind of let us down. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's all. Uh, very, very interesting right now. Teams have bye weeks from week three to me. I think that's crazy to me. Yeah, all well, you guys got bye weeks. Bye. You and Penn State, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's weird. I'm, that's super weird. I, it's just the way that we have an extra week in the schedule this year, the way the dates fell. Yeah. Like the yeah. way the dates fell, we have, we, everyone has two bye weeks this year. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yours is this early. And isn't your second one not even that late? Uh, no, it's not. It's right after Oregon. It's October 19th. So that's yeah. with, that's, that was the one out we were talking about with yeah. Texas was, or with Ohio state was like, they got two really early bye weeks. Mm-hmm. So they might just, you know, going that deep into the season might eventually catch up to them. Yeah. I'm not wishing injury. Jesus, man, saying, here we go. Look, He's I'm, wishing, I'm pulling at it's week we two and I'm almost hurt, out of cards. And we're depleted. Oh I'm man. I'm out of cards. I'm just saying, I always have, I always have things to pull, but we're, you know, I just, I'm just so mad and disappointed by the way the Big Ten performed like this week. I know Iowa let everyone down. I know and Michigan once again let that quarterback who's an OSU transfer beat him. It is crazy that he beat Michigan or sooner than any Ohio State guy did, and he had to leave the school. That's kind of nuts. He was there when Justin Fields was there. I'm aware. I'm aware. He's, you know, he hasn't lost to Michigan. I, you don't think I know that? I will say there was yeah. about seven or eight legitimately seven or eight Ohio State fans in full Ohio State gear at the Michigan game again. Like guys, it's embarrassing. Why? I mean, we always have one at our game. I always see a Michigan fan at our game. It's, I know, it's but like, like it's like dude had, the dude was wearing Ohio State gear with a Texas oh. ten gallon hat on, doing all the Texas stuff. Oh, trust me, I have seen your guys do that before. And the guys amazing. behind me, I know they're not watching. Both had a northern accent. And both didn't know who Texas was playing next week. Oh, All right. Yeah. And both of you said you're from Michigan. I know what was going on. I know what was going on. They're, they were throwing up. They were throwing up shenanigans. Little bro shenanigans. I had multiple little bros that went to the game. I know Zach didn't end up going, but I know another guy that were all green in the game. No shame, David. So, all right. Uh, yeah. There will probably be a lot of green on October 26th, though. The fact, oh. the fact that that game might be oh. like the biggest win of my season is crazy. No. <laughs> Don't make me get personally involved. I almost, I, I might have to get personally involved in that game, but we'll see. What happens if you guys lose? What's the podcast going to be like that week? Um, it'll be Blake was right about DeBoer all along. All right. Um, it, was, it was kind of nuts because some Ohio State fan. <laughs> someone cut who, but I, so they put out a poll today. Which law would be worth for Michigan to Ohio State for a fourth straight time or losing to Michigan State? And I'm like, dude, losing to a team that comes off four wins or losing off a team that you lost to three years in a row, that's a I tough one. I be that guy. We could lose to Ohio State this year. I wouldn't feel a thing. Sorry. Yeah, game is so much more lost value games to. Like, you know what I mean? Come on. All right. <laughs> oh, the answer man. is Michigan State. The top out. Particularly the top out here. There's no cop out. Trust me. Michigan State would be the worst loss by a mile. <laughs> by a mile. Well, unless you lose, unless you lose this week. Eh. Uh, if you, oh, you <laughs> guys. <are weak. laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just pre based on preseason spreads, the second worst team we faced was Michigan State. I, I don't know. I, again, I, I I don't know how Vegas has been this wrong on so many teams this year already. I think the transfer portals kind of screwed up their model, but yeah, yeah. Who knows? yeah. So, yeah, all that's right. That's everything for this um, one. Yeah. Any other closing thoughts? Nope. Nope. I think we're good. Bye week. Have fun, guys. <laughs>